Hey everyone, let's dive into the world of retrospective cohort studies. Imagine you're a researcher, sifting through historical data to uncover patterns. That's exactly what happens in a retrospective cohort study. First up, cohort selection. Think of it like this. You're starting with a group of individuals who were exposed to a risk factor or intervention at some point in the past. We'll call this the exposed cohort. Next, it's time to gather data. You use historical records or databases to collect information on both the exposed cohort and a comparison group, the unexposed cohort. This data includes outcomes that occurred after the initial exposure. Now, on to outcome assessment. Here, you're analyzing the data to see the occurrence of outcomes like diseases or health events in both groups. The goal? To find associations between the exposure and the outcomes. Finally, there's the analysis. By comparing the incidence of outcomes between the exposed and unexposed groups, you can infer potential relationships between the exposure and the outcome. But remember, causality can be tricky to establish because of the retrospective nature of the study. Retrospective cohort studies are incredibly useful. They can be conducted relatively quickly and often at a lower cost compared to prospective studies. However, they're not without limitations. The availability and quality of existing records can be a challenge, and biases like recall bias or incomplete data can creep in. So, if you're a researcher looking to uncover patterns in historical data, a retrospective cohort study might just be the method for you. That's a wrap on retrospective cohort studies. Keep digging for those insights, and I'll see you in the next video.